it's 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 optimistic and it's also if i'm being honest it's it's frightening that you know when you began your answer art you mentioned that critical thinking or judgment is becoming a scarce resource and <laughs> on one end it, it, it's it's optimistic because you know we're, we're going to value judgment but on the other hand that implies that many people and millions and billions of people are becoming less able to judge and right and wrong and or or, or answer these moral questions and like you say the 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 the, the moral experiment was such a that the moral machine experiment was such a an eye opener because we ourselves can't even agree on the right answer and so how are we supposed to get a universal answer for AI? And that's that's really a really interesting question and a really interesting topic. And so on th that's on one end. On the other end, you also touch on misinformation and how the European Union is handling it. And of course, with all of what's happening in the world right now, I think it's clear to say that a lot of people, I think that the... the, the the consensus would be, I would, I would bet that the consensus would be it's getting harder to distinguish what's good and what's right and what's true and what's false in a way that we're so caught up in the machines and so many people are using these machines to, to, to carve a narrative and it's, it's getting hard to, to get to that judgment. And so those two things. And the, the third one is how you touch about the, the, the illusion of choice and one of the biggest things that I appreciated on the AI dilemma is that you you start by saying that we're built biologically to to become agents of action. We we like agency in our lives, and so while it's it's hard to to get that agency in life, we crave it in a biological sense. And the path of least resistance again comes comes to mind art because AI gives us this illusionary feeling that we have a choice and so these three themes I, I, I would try to um, uh, I would like you to, to help me unpack them because like you say like you see it's it's overwhelming <laughs> but I think we can start with the illusion of choice what do you mean by by the illusion, illusion of choice for our listeners who, who haven't read the AI dilemma and how does this play out with the other all of the other things that I mentioned you know misinformation and scarcity of judgment so a really great example of the illusion of choice is I've got to write – well, I've got to write a report, a legal brief, a document of some kind, a uh, paper for a school class or for my boss. And now I have this tool, ChatGPT, and I pay $20 a month to get the up-to-date engine. Never mind that all its data was compiled before November 2021. It's going to take all of my ideas and put them into a coherent form, and I can turn it in. I've got that choice, or I've got the choice of working, you know, staying up all night and finishing it by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Which am I going to choose? Well, of course, I'm going to choose ChatGPT because it works. And I scan it over quickly, and I read it, and I turn it in. Um, <laughs> and it's full of hallucinations. You can't trace any of the sources. It makes up sources. And it gives you what it has gleaned from a large language model, which basically is tracking what words follow other words in an acceptable sense that is regarded as compelling mm -hmm. over time millions and millions and millions of times. So it gives you a very clear sounding, coherent sounding, mediocre document with false statements in it. That's your real choice. The illusion of choice at first is that you can, you know, you can just turn it in. As the technology, as that happens and more and more people get aware of it, they become more sophisticated and the technology becomes more sophisticated and we start to learn things like you know as the as the same large language model parses other documents written by ai its awareness degrades it becomes more like a xerox copy of a xerox copy of a xerox copy it becomes you know more more and more problematic so it gets upgraded and you know the companies like openai keep tending it and, you know, and investing in it. 
and we get more upgraded until the point now we have the choice between a – so now let's say a year or two from now, we have the choice between again staying up till 8 a.m. All, all morning or taking a much better written thing and running it through a credibility checker, which will exist by that time, and checking the credibility. And now we've made a second choice and we've turned it in and nobody can fault us for it. We're not going to get dinged. We're not going to get lose our law license because we turned in something without real cases or what have you. But we've lost the ability now to, through the act of writing, parse through and see what we actually believe. And we've lost the ability to see how that goes when if we don't show it to others. So the responsibility of getting better, of really of having our choice of human experience actually improve the way we operate in the world, that's now on us. We no longer have a structure like a school or a apprentice program or a mentorship that's actually doing it for us. We are now choosing to cast ourselves in the world and and in that, you know, the challenge is, are we going to be more aware of ourselves or are we going to get into some kind of bubble where it's okay to kind of – where the path of least resistance is not being challenged? And, you know, I don't know. I, I think there's a scenario – in scenarios like this, there's always outliers. There's always, you know, people um, doing all of those things. But the question is, which is the prevailing way of activity? Which is the prevailing way the world works? And I think the prevailing way the world works will partly depend on how creativity and intellectual activity is funded. And then I think partly it will be on how it is rewarded. Nobody's going to have atten enough attention to, under to, to pay attention to everything. It just isn't that much human attention. So we're going to end up aggregating. We're all going to end up aggregating what we pay attention to and skimming the very, very bits we care about. And AI will be part of the equation of providing that ecosystem. It will be there because people need it. Will it be restrictive or will it be open? Well, there's always openness at the edges what this time it's all edges and that makes it wow. no it does it does and